Howdy folks and welcome to another Salient Process BPM technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to look at a new feature that was recently added in BPM 860 Cumulative Fix 2017-12. So the December 2017 Patches Fix Maintenance for IBM BPM 860. Specifically we're going to look at a new feature called inline user tasks inline user tasks so let's get on with it let's create a new bpm process so i go to processes i say create me a new process we'll call this uh what should we call it we'll call it test process and we'll hit the finish button and we see our lovely BPM process but immediately we notice something we haven't seen before the concept of inline user task also notice that the icon is subtly different so previously we had a BPM process which had a, a default user task activity but now we've got something called an inline user task if we go look at the implementation of this step we see it's defined to be an inline user task and that's distinct from a user task so let's talk about what an inline user task is when we model a BPM process, we sit down with our business colleagues and we sit down and we write uh, our process and we add steps into the process, we drag and we drop them and we wire them together. Ideally, we want this process, even in its rawest state, to be able to be executed as quickly as possible. Now, if we think about modeling a BPM process, we model the steps that we want to execute, we model the order in which they're going to be executed, and then we come along and we add variables. So, for example, I might define a variable. Uh, let's give ourselves a private variable called var1 as a string, and I'm not going to be imaginative on my names, and var2 also as a string. So, we've got two variables in our process. Now, imagine that in our business process definition here we want to define the inputs and outputs from this user activity so I might go to my data mapping and I might say it's going to have an input of var1 and it's going to have an input of var2 and it's going to have an output also of var2 so here it's going to give us this input variable 1 and variable 2 presumably the screen is going to allow the user to modify the value of variable 2 and we're going to output the value of variable 2. Great. So let's give these some uh, some default values. So let's go to var1 and say it's got a, v a default value and say this is my var1 and same for var2. Go here, select a default, say that this is going to be my var2. Great. Wonderful. Now notice what we didn't do we didn't define an implementation for this user task. So that means it's going to be the default user task activity. So let's go and have a play of this process. Let's run it. So we're running this process. The process is now blocked, waiting for this activity. Let's bring up the screen for this activity and look what we see. We see something very interesting here. Previously, a default user task would have looked like this, and there would have been no input or output of the variables. But notice with this inline user task, we have a read-only version of the input variables, and here we can have got a read-write version of the output variables. I can click Done, and my process will then continue on to the next step where there isn't one. So what the inline user task has done for us, it has generated a screen, let's run it again, it has generated a screen where that screen contains the input and the output variables. Now, it's not a very pretty screen, it certainly is not one I'd want to give immediately to my business users, but it is functional. So even with just this bare bones instantaneous process, I can now supply input data and output data that would allow my process to execute. Well, that's pretty darn clever. We like this. We like this a lot. Now, the template, the screen you're seeing here, which contains these input and output fields, we can actually go further. We can customize this or define our own version of this. So let's go look and see how we go ahead and do that. 
So we've got our user interface. We're going to create ourselves a new coach view. I'm going to call it, doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm going to call it my inline task, inline user task template. I'm just going to call it that. doesn't have to be called anything special. I'm going to call it that. And then in my overview, I'm going to say it can fire a boundary event and it's a template. Okay. Now in my layout, this is where the magic happens. If I place a content box, a, a sorry, a content box, a content, why can't I find a content box? It's because it's under advanced. If I add a content box and call that content box, give it the control ID, and this is important, task input, then this context box will be where the BPM inline coach, inline uh, user at task, will place the input variables. If I add another content box and call this one uh, task output, this is where the output fields will go. So let's, uh, let's pretty up this screen a little bit. Let's create a well to contain our boxes. Great, there's a well. And in our well, let's put a collapsible panel a collapsible panel, great, and let's call that collapsible panel input variables. Uh, let's spell that right. Input, no, let's not call it input variables, let's call it inputs. And in here we will place our input data. Let's create another collapsible panel and let's call this one outputs and let's drag our content box for outputs in there. Let's make these uh, panels initially collapsed a little bit of little bit of tweaking here initially collapsed yes we like that and let's give the well the def let's make sure this is a well yes make give this well the default styling of primary so in just a few seconds there we created a new template we've given it called the inputs outputs uh, and just for good measure we will give it a title so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some custom HTML at the top here and we'll give it a title of uh, H1 My Template just to show that it really is my template that's running. So after having created this template called My Inline User Task Template, if I now go back to my BPM process, go to my process definition, go to my Inline User Task Definition and here in the implementation section, I can choose a template. So let's select my inline user task template. So I just selected the one that we just created. I'm going to now rerun my process. I'm going to rerun the process here and hit the play button and let's see what we see. And we now see my template with my inputs and my outputs. Now, if the inputs are richer data types and strings, if they're checkboxes or other goodies, those are uh, visualized correctly. Same with business objects, and although I haven't tested it yet, presumably lists and tables and other things. So this was a quick overview of the new notion in BPM 860, Cumulative Fix 2017-12, of the new concept called inline user tasks. By not specifying a custom coach or a coach, an inline user task is generated and the inline user task generates inputs and outputs as a function of the data types mapped as input on and outputs of that user task. The screen that is generated is a very attractive screen for us and we can overwrite the look and feel of that on a pair inline user task basis or as a whole if we modify the IBM supplied sample. So we can completely customize what the template looks like and BPM injects the input and the output sections, thereby allowing us to create uh, almost instantaneous tests of our BPM process where we can specify user data in the inputs and outputs. I hope you found this useful. I look forward to more of these videos in the future. Thanks, folks, and bye for now.